Hey everybody, Quantum here with a bit of a different video from our usual content where we normally focus around meta and competitive Lorcana. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a more casual Sapphire Steel build that focuses around heroes. Obviously, with the new Ursula's Return cards, we got some nice new hero support on the Steel side in the new Phil that gains one lore whenever you play a hero, and the new Anna on the Sapphire side that whenever she quests, she gives plus one lore to your other heroes when they quest as well. So what's nice about this deck is you're able to utilize some of the lower to the ground uh, steel and sapphire cards, things like this Simba and the like Mickey Detective on the sapphire side in order to get multiple benefits off of these additional cards. So whenever you play Simba, when you have the fill on board, you'll gain a lore. And then if you have Anna questing, it turns Simba into a two quester as well. So these cards that seemingly have very limited value when you first play them, just gain some additional nice effects as you get these other um, I don't know what you'd call them, but supporting characters, I guess, on board in the Phil and the Anna. Uh, we'll take a look at the deck list towards the end of the video, but here you can see kind of some of the goals of the deck. We're able to get rid of the second bricked whole new world with the Simba, which is nice. And then we're able to fire the cannons away the opponent's Robin Hood that they developed on turn two in order to prevent the shift on the turn three. Unfortunately though, the opponent is able to Mim Fox the um, Chernobog followers back to hand and take out our Simba. So we lose a little bit of advantage there, um, but we're gonna be able to drop this Hercules on three, which, you know, isn't, isn't going to be the greatest answer to this Mim Fox because the Mim Fox essentially already went two for one here, but it's okay because we do have that whole new world to hopefully reset the card advantage, um, which we know Amethyst Steel is very good at managing since they have all of the card draw from Amethyst. What I will say is the hero deck, at least the, the Sapphire Steel version that I've built here, is unfortunately not the greatest in the meta right now so i wouldn't necessarily try to make this too competitive simply because you know steel inherently has a weakness against ruby and this deck in particular with all of the lower to the ground heroes that you play does basically get entirely wiped out by the ruby cards things like the new sisu eight drop that banishes two strength or less characters madame medusa sisu daring visitor brawls etc since a lot of your cards are two strength or less and even on your top end like with this robin hood and the beast tragic hero you're you're on three strength or less as well so you're very susceptible to getting ice blocked down and then just the ruby cards mopping up the rest of your cards here now again with that being said against other matchups you should have a decent time um, and here you can see the opponent is further dumping their hand on board probably anticipating that we're going to hold new world soon since they saw us discard one off that simba so we're able to dump our entire hand and then whole new world with the robin hood the nice thing about phil as well is that he synergizes nicely to sing the along came zeus which we were able to use to out the smee so we are anticipating that our phil is going to get taken out by this um mim fox here and I was debating if I should use the Zeus card to take out the Fox, but then I was like, well, the opponent just drew a fresh seven, so they might have another Fox. I instead opt to double ramp with the double Mickeys, which does get me two lore to help me keep pace with the opponent's Queen's Castle there. They're gonna go ahead and quest with the Rabbit and then use the Snake to bounce it back and draw a card, so generating all the card advantage. Um, we did see them discard a whole new world as well, so it's interesting to see that this build of uh, Amethyst Steel is on that card also. Um, and we did lose one, right, when we discarded it off the Simba, so we only have two left in the deck. The opponent does indeed take out the Phil, though, with their Fox, taking their Fox out as well. And at this point, I'm thinking like, okay, they got two Queen's Castle, I have two Zeus, I can actually run over things because this top decked fill to reestablish on the board here is gonna give all my other heroes plus one on the challenger side, which makes this Mickey uh, a two, three body when it challenges instead of a one, three, which is really relevant here because you can, well, I mean, not super relevant, but it allows us to basically take out the location if we want um, without spending any extra resources. And then what I can do is actually mop up the opponent's board presence here by using the Zeus on the snake, which admittedly doesn't feel the greatest, but wiping out their board here is actually relevant because in this particular matchup, um, I know that Steel has a rougher time dealing with a wide board than other ink combinations because their removal, you know, depends on AOE pinging damage like Tinkerbell, Grab Your Swords, etc. And being on Sapphire, we do play the Cogsworth, which gives resist plus one to everything. So I would like to see a Cogsworth because putting that on board would help me solidify this matchup. Um, you know, traditional Sapphire Steel synergies that you get there, inherently very powerful against other 
steel decks. What's also interesting is in an attempt to help combat some of the sapphire decks in the meta, you could also run, which you saw me ink there, in the new heavy storm item that I, I call it heavy storm from Yu-Gi-Oh. Basically, I think it's called like I'll flatten, I'll, I'll find them, I'll flatten them. It, it takes out all items. It's a four cost song, so you can sing it with things like the Phil, like the Anna, the Robin Hood, etc. Um, or just hard cast it and just wipe out all items to prevent, you know, hear them draws and things like that. Uh, the opponent cycles through their rabbit a few times there in order to draw a couple of cards but their end board still looks pretty weak and right now i'm thinking okay i can probably just continue to aggressively push um a board widening or you know widening my, my board state to make it more difficult for the opponent to deal with um unfortunately my board is very susceptible to getting double grab your swords which the opponent is only two turns away from developing so i have to be a little careful but i mean what can i really do here i'm not going to just play super conservative i have to start going for aggressive lore gains here and or deal with the opponent's queen's castle what's nice is a wide, a wide board like this does give me a lot of options to deal with multiple threats on the opponent's side um, so here you can see me thinking what's the best course of action to boost up my Robin Hood with. Um, we're just going to go ahead and put 6 strength on the Robin Hood to, to throw it into, into the um, Queen's Castle to out the second location there. Quest with the Mickey Mouse and then pass turn. Expecting full well that the opponent is going to throw their Mim Snake into one of my Mickeys. Unfortunately we didn't see an Anna or a Cogsworth yet so... No, no sapphire cards pretty much except for these mickeys um they drop a rabbit draw a card and then drop their own robin hood and i'm just hoping they don't have a double grab your swords and to be fair you know these these steel builds usually are only on two grab your swords max they're usually not on three so we're going to go ahead and top deck and drop this second mickey mouse here which is going to allow us to gain a lore off the fill first of all and then use robin hood to challenge that snake and take it out and gain the lore. Then we're gonna be able to Baboom and Zeus away the opponent's Robin Hood, leaving them only with Rabbit. Um, even if they have a Fox here, we're not in too much of a bad spot. What we really have to fear is a double grab your swords because that would wipe out our whole board, especially if they crash crashed their Rabbit into our non-damaged Robin Hood first. That would put two damage on it and then double grab your swords would clean up my entire board, leaving me on zero cards and definitely in a losing position for the rest of this game. If they don't have that double grab your swords though, there's almost nothing the opponent can do here to win the game since we will just quest for the last three lore in the next turn. Once I see this rabbit come down after the first grab your swords, I'm like, yes, we got it. And there we take the victories. When constructing this deck, the goal was obviously to go heavy on the heroes in order to gain the benefits off of the Phil and the Anna. Unfortunately, in that gameplay, we didn't see Anna, but trust me, she was in the deck. Regardless, though, what's nice about this deck is even your lower cost characters, when you see them later on in the game, as you saw from that gameplay, if you have the Phil and or Anna up, it turns these cards into a little bit more of a threat than they normally would be. The Simba coming down will represent a lore gain as well as a potential two quester if you have both the Anna and the Phil on board, for example. Yes, this is a combo oriented deck to a certain degree, so not necessarily the most competitive. And like I mentioned, you are very susceptible to the Ruby removal since a lot of your cards are on the two strength or less curve. But that being said, you know, like I said, it's it's a more of a casual deck that's very fun to use actually. But the Robin Hood and the Simba are both heroes, same with the Kita and this Mickey Mouse. Um, so your low drop package can be very effective. You saw us use the Mickey Mouse um, to great effect there. And the Kita is a bodyguard that helps to protect things like your Anna when she quests, uh, which is very nice so that you can get multiple quests off with her to boost up your field. The Judy Hops may not be needed since you pay, play four of the I Find Them, I Flatten Them, the card that basically wipes out all items. But the Judy Hops is also an option that basically represents a three quester when you have her paired with the Anna and some additional item removal on the spot if you don't see the I Flatten Them or just don't have the ability to cast it at the moment. The Mickey Mouse also represents great value because when you play it, you get the ink. And then, like you saw in that match with the fill on board, we also generated a lore when we played it. So it represents both a lore gain and a free ink, which is great. And then again, it quests for two when you are able to quest with the Anna if she's on board as well. Hercules, just more bodyguard support as well as being a hero. So that's nice. 
Cogsworth continues to do what Cogsworth does in, in Sapphire Steel. Giving all of your cards resist one can be hugely beneficial, especially in steel mirror matches where, you know, against like Emerald Steel and, and Amber Steel or even other Sapphire Steel decks, it can make some of your cards very hard to out. Giving your Anna that resist one also makes her just that much harder to out. Giving your bodyguards that resist one make them obviously very difficult to out as well. So Cogsworth, a super strong card that should always be paired with with steel whenever you're playing sapphire steel um and yeah despite us not playing too many sapphire cards as you can see here only 13 um the sapphire cards that we are playing like in the anna and the cogsworth do represent great value and even the mickey mouse the only thing i say you could probably cut is the judy hops but let me know in the comment section below if you want me to explore this deck a little bit more maybe i can try to fix up these ratios i just threw together whatever i could find so far and it, it seemed to have worked out in the one match that i played um, the Beast Tragic Hero and the Robin Hood, more heroes. Yes, they are three strengths, so again, more things susceptible to the Ruby removal, but there's not much you can do about that. That's just the nature of this deck. Um, and then on the top end, we have probably the strongest card in the deck in the Hercules Beloved Hero. You could opt to play more of this since, you know, a 6-5 body with resist 1 inherently and bodyguard is very strong. Pair that with the Cogsworth. This card is almost impossible to out without direct removal. It's not susceptible to strength-based removal. It's not going to be challenged over. It's not going to be, you know, zeus away or something like that against the opposing steel matchups. Especially, like I said, when it has the additional resist from the Cogsworth. But inherently having one resist being a bodyguard, this card can easily protect your whole field, which allows you to aggro quest out for game. Again, the weakness is if that if that new 8-drop Sisu didn't exist to wipe out two strength or less characters, this deck might actually be somewhat competitive, but unfortunately, you know, you do have to live with that. Because if you if you drop this Hercules when you have like three or four heroes on board, including an Ana, like you quest with the Ana, you quest with all your heroes, how is your opponent running over this Hercules, right? Like they're not in order to get to your other heroes. So this card, you could opt to play more. It is a pretty strong card, but again, just because of the where, where we are with Ruby right now in the meta and what you might see, it, it does make this deck overall a little bit harder to to play and, and win with in that metagame. Um, but as, again, as you saw, against the opposing Steel decks, Amethyst Steel, Amber Steel, other Sapphire Steel decks, you should actually have a pretty decent time in, in winning. But maybe I need to test this more because I haven't actually played it against Ruby, but I imagine that that's how it would go. It'd be very difficult to win. Uh, to deal with Emerald decks, you know, we got Fire the Cannons and Baboons on the lower end of the curve here. Uh, this is very strong in dealing with things like the Diablo, obviously. And then it's some um, higher strength, or sorry, higher uh, damage removal. We got three along came Zeus. It's nice because you have a lot of cards here that can sing it. You probably never want to sing it with Anna, but singing it with Phil, Cogsworth, Beast, Robin Hood, or Hercules is nice. And then this tech item or tech card, I should say, in order to banish all items in the I find my platinum. Not sure if you want to play four, you know, but it is ink at worst. Uh, but you know, top decking this feels kind of bad when you need actual characters. So in that case, you might want to reduce it. But this is basically one of your only tools in order to combat the Sapphire decks that you might run into. And this card can definitely be devastating against those Sapphire decks. And then to help flesh out your card draw, um, along with the Beast Tragic Hero, you have a whole new world. Um, as you saw in that match, we were able to dump our hand, take care of the opponent's board, and then whole new world ourselves into advantage, similar to what Amber Steel Song does to a certain degree, and it ended up working out for us quite well. So that's the deck list. Only 13 uninkables, I think. Yep, and uh, 47 inkables, so very accessible, very easy to play. Uh, decent ratio in terms of characters, actions, and songs. Um, could fix up the ratios with Sapphire a little bit more, but... That's just how I made it on the initial uh, kind of construction. Let me know what you think though in the comment section below. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Quantum is out.